So yeah, I've got two different types of easel cards. I was doing a little bit of homework on easel cards and I, I know there are a fair few. I've just got two. Oh, good morning, Barry. How are you doing? I've just got the two uh, different types for you. There are lots of different types of easel cards, apparently. Um, and I saw one very elaborate one and I have seen it before. I've never made one. It's um, four, four easel cards in one. So um, we're not going to do that today. We're just going to stick with the two, um, what I would call a traditional easel card, and then the morning. Yeah, you're in the line for Tesco's. I did that with Sarah's video last week. I was in the line for Sainsbury's, and it was snaking literally right round the car park four times. Um, so I'm hoping you're not standing out in the rain uh, barrier. It's pretty horrible here. But it was much better when I got inside Sainsbury's. They had massively limited the amount of people that were in the store, hence the queues outside. And personally, I, I don't mind that. I'd much rather wait um, in line and it'd be quieter inside. So, wow, there's 10 of you on, nine of you on. Good morning, Anne-Marie. You're probably working away. So we'll get going. Um, I've got two different types, like I say, two different types of easel cards for you this morning. One is made up already. I've given it a sample. Good morning, Katie and one is not so we'll see how that second one goes but i'm going to go first off we're going to go for the traditional easel card good morning kate i think that's you which is this one i've been a bit naughty i've used some dsp which is not current i don't mind doing that at the end of the day i'm showing you the technique good morning jill how are you doing i'm showing you the technique okay but um this paper it just called out to me this morning i bought it literally I think on the last day of when it was actually available. Good morning Karen, how are you? Um, so it isn't currently available but there is a stamp set um, which you could use to recreate it and that is the Timeless Tulip. So it has got the tulip and it's got the leaves, it's got everything you need in order to be able to recreate this card. So if you were interested that comes as a bundle uh, with the punch um, for, uh, what is that, £30.50, and pence. that's not bad is it? So let me spin you around and we'll get going. You might be upside down again. We, we managed to figure this little problem out, but we don't seem to be able to... Um, I don't, I, yeah, we did figure it out and, and now we haven't. So, um, so this is the card that we're going to make. And then what an easel card does is it stands up. So I'm hoping you can see this. So that's the whole premise behind an easel card is that it props up and you then get a three dimensional card. So that's why I thought this flower pot would just be perfect for it because flower pots do stand up. They don't lay flat, do they? You've got the twins watching here, avoiding the rain. Oh gosh, yes, I don't, I don't blame you. I'd be fascinated to see if you do give that um, uh, time capsule thing a go, Katie. I saw something on Facebook this morning um, and I shared it with a few people I thought might find it interesting. So hopefully you do. I, I, I felt like having a go myself, um, certainly creating something similar. But anyway, we're here for easel cards. So this first one is made. I'm just going to pop that out of the way while I make you the new one. I used um, Barmy Blue card and I've got one piece here which is 28 centimetres by 10.5 centimetres. I hope you can hear me because of the rain but please do let me know if you can't. Um, it is quite noisy. So 28 by 10.5 and the reason I go for 28, it's shorter than A4 but it means that I can um, score it easily where we need to score it. You're upside down and suddenly you can hear the rain. Yeah, well, it's just started raining heavily. It's really noisy in here when um, when it rains. I'm looking forward to the day when I can have an inside craft room. So, 28 by 10.5. And I've scored it in the middle at 14 and in the quarter at 7. So, 7 and 14. So, I'm going to fold and burnish those score lines. And one day I'll figure out how to not be upside down. Oh good, you can hear me, I'm pleased. Okay, that's one piece. And then we've got another piece here that is 10.5, same width as this one, by 14, the same as half of this one. So 10.5 by 14. Okay, and this is where I'm going to use to begin with to make 
the uh, flower pot on. Okay, so I've got a piece of this designer series paper, which I haven't pre-cut. I thought I had, but I haven't. And I'm going to cut that to 10 by 13 and a half. So it's just half a centimetre smaller than the balmy blue piece. 10 by 13 and a half. Trim that. I like to cut my card like that, my paper like that, so I get um, the maximum use out of it. So that can be used for something else. Double tapping on the camera icon. I'm willing to try anything, Karen. Is that is that better? Are we the right way up now? Let's see. You're working, I know, but oh bless you, Anne Marie. Some people have got to keep us going. No, I think we're still upside down. <laughs> but thank you though, Karen. Um, if you are a technical wizard, I'd love to have a PM with you later. Um, I'm learning as we go. I kind of figure, and I watched a video by somebody just while I glue this on. Um, not long ago, not long ago, it was probably about six months ago. And she was basically saying, we can wait in life until we are perfect um we can you know you can wait and you can do all the practicing you like and all the rest of it but the likelihood is that you won't actually end up doing it because you're never really going to be perfect or we can just get on with things give them a go um and see what happens and you guys have absolutely been absolutely fantastic you've always stayed with me and i appreciate your support even though things might not go 100 percent right so i've got this piece of um the designer series paper and this is eight centimetres, I think. No, it should be eight centimetres. By, let's just trim that down a little bit. By two centimetres. But honestly, you don't need to be too precise. All we're creating is a little flower pot. Morning, Jan. So that looks nice to me. And then we've got this piece here. Again, we don't need to be too precise. But it's about six and a half by six and a half and that's going to create our base but what I'm going to do is cut it to a diagonal oh morning Polly you made it oh I, I am sorry you know, as soon as you said that you'd seen the chiropractor I remembered about your back but it, I had forgotten until then I'm so sorry so all I'm going to do is cut it at the diagonal to create a flower pot shape So I'm going to pick my point, and if you want to be precise, you can measure it inwards from either side. And I'm just going to, and again, if you want to be precise, you can do it on your trimmer, or you can draw a line with a pencil and a ruler. But I'm just going to cut a section away. Good morning, Anita. How are you doing? Not tied up with a card challenge this morning. For those that don't know, Anita drew a fantastic um, tatty teddy bear. She was asked to make a tatty teddy card and um, realised she didn't have any stamps or papers or anything. So she she decided to draw one, <laughs> which I thought was fantastic. Good for you. So that's my flower pot. Now on my other card, I felt like I'd made it too high. Okay, so I'm just going to try and make this one a little bit lower. Because I want more space for my tulip. And you can decorate this card, your easel card, honestly, in whatever you want. So, Anita, and for those that have just joined, I'll pop back onto the um, base in a minute and I'll talk to you about the base. So I'll go over that again, don't you worry. So that's our flower pot base. Probably not in the middle, but never mind. Such is life. When is nature ever straight? That's what I always say. And then we're going to stick this one, again I'm just going to bring it down slightly more than I had done on my last one and bring that across there. So again I've used this paper, the designer series paper, and it's got some lovely colours in it, just beautiful and bold and reminded me of spring, so that's why I thought we'd go with this this morning. 
But you could quite as easily recreate it with this stamp set, with the tulips, or to be honest, with any other flowers that you've got at home. So, and then we've got four, I've just, I fussy cut these out, I don't own the punch, and it was one of the reasons I didn't actually buy the paper. And I like that purple one, so I probably want the purple one at the top, like this. Okay, and then I've got some leaves as well. And with the leaves, because they're going to come poking out, you don't need, so like this one was where I kind of half punched something, if you can see that. And I've, I'm going to use it anyway, because it, they're going to pop out from behind the flowers. So I'm going to stick these flowers down. And they don't have any stems. We're just going to try and fill that in with lots of leaves. So I might need to cut some more. My rabbits are outside looking, looking out the window going, what is this wet stuff? <laughs> we haven't seen this for a while, have we? So with this, um, I'm just putting glue in the middle, um, just, just right in the middle, because I want to tuck flowers in and around. Um, and I can't do that if I've glued all the way to the edge. So when I'm doing anything that requires leaves to be stuck in underneath i make try and make sure i only um stick a little bit and you could put these up on dimensionals i'm not going to but you absolutely could so i've been busy preparing for the may class some of you might have seen my picture the other day so we're nearly ready to get everything sent out. Um, I know the postal system re is really doing well, but it's, it's struggling. So I um, wanted to make sure I get everything out in good time. I know I'm expecting a few bits and bobs which haven't turned up. Well, my dad sent me a card before Easter and that's still... Do they have umbrellas? What, on, on this paper? Yeah, they really do. Let me show you. Oh no, the rabbits. Have the rabbits got umbrellas? No. No, I should have been using this though. Let me show you this paper. This would have been a little bit more apt for today. Look at those. That way. Aren't they gorgeous? So I'm going to have to do something with those later, I think. No, they're in the hutches. They've got a little roll down section. So I need to go out and roll that down, really. Bless them. Yeah, the rabbits, Claire. I know it, when I do these, I'm a bit slow as to what you all guys are all talking about. So this one here, it's got a straight line edge on it. So I can just pop that against my flower pot and that will just look like it's coming out. And the same with this one on the other side. So I might need to get a few more leaves cut, but that's okay. Lots of greenery. I'll try and poke that under there, but I must have glued that one down quite well. There we go, like that. <laughs> you tidying up and finding lots of stuff that you've, you've forgotten about. I know, I, I need a good old car. I've been doing little bits, little bits at a time. So I'm definitely getting there. But isn't it funny what we come across? So I'm just going to cut some more bits of this paper. I didn't want to leave it all to fussy cut. There's quite a lot of fussy cutting. And as much as I enjoy it, you probably don't necessarily want to sit there and watch me doing it. Oh look, there's another bit there that I chopped off the last one. You've still got sunshine! Nice! Yeah, probably not for long. It is supposed to rain most of the day, I think. But showers, it's been on and off. Gosh, it's so noisy though. So 
So can you see we're just building up this um, flower pot full of flowers really. Using all the little bits. My next card is using scraps as well. You'll all be glad to hear. I know I get a little bit of a rap, bad rap sometimes for um, throwing away all of my scraps. But I have, um, I have sorted everything out and I've got a big box ready to donate to the nursery when we go back. Yes, the ra yeah, genuine, that's what you can hear, it's the rain, Paula. I'm hoping that my voice is coming through louder than the rain. I'm trying to speak up a little bit. Oh, you made a car for your mother-in-law. Fabulous. That Daisy Lane, I mean, the Daisy Lane set is gorgeous, isn't it? Right, so let's just chop that off there so we can have the leaves crisscrossing each other and I think I'm happy with that we don't want too many so that's our base card now I'm just going to use two punches that don't often see the light of day and that's the one and one eighth scallop circle and one and three eighth scallop circle Oh, it sounds like mega static. Sometimes I genuinely can't work out here because of the rain. If it's really, really bad. It's just, yeah, it, it is like white noise. Are you fussy cutting too? Oh, that's... You're a bit like me, Heidi. You do like the fussy cutting. So there's one in Whisper White and one in the same patterned paper as this background here. And I'm just going to add these on. I've got a sentiment from Timeless Tropical. But actually I just looked for any kind of small sentiment that I could find. Oh, you heard from the Rowans that you can go and help. That's, that's good news, Claire. I know you were waiting to see. So w what day will you go and do that on? I'm going to turn that over. I didn't like the first one. Here we go a bit better. I didn't stamp it very much in the middle. So will that be on the Friday, Claire, when you, um, your day off work? David can hear the, your rave from the conservatory. But surely you're concerned. Are you in the sunshine as well still? Good morning, Jeanette. Nice to see you. Figuratively speaking, of course. Friday and Saturday, oh nice. Yeah, that'll be brilliant, Claire. Just just let them know that you're busy on the first Friday of the month, won't you? <laughs> Can't lose you from class. Right, there we go. So I'm just gonna pop that on there. A nice little flower pot easel. So for those that missed the first bit, this was our card base, if you like. 28 centimeters long, because it makes the measurements easier. Let me spin that round for you as well, so you're not upside down. 28 centimetres by 10 and a half, scored at 14 and 7. Okay, so that we can bend it and bend it again. Because the whole point of an easel card is that it stands upright. So we're also going to decorate this section down here. And I'm going to use this coordinating paper. And that is 5 centimetres by 10.5. So the same width. Oh, you get a discount. Nice. Well, we will let you know, Claire. That's good enough reason to go and volunteer anyway, isn't it? <laughs> they have some fabulous stuff. This is, um, for those that don't know, the Rowans have... Um, Rowans Hospice is a local hospice to Waterlooville. Um, they have got um, various... They've got several second-hand craft shops, which is a little bit dangerous because... You feel like where well, you are um, donating to charity and buying craft supplies at the same time. So they are enabling all of us. But yeah, they have some fab stuff. And there's a local lady who seems to get rid of all her stamping up stuff in the Rowan's, hosp hosp uh, Rowan's place. So yeah, it's fab. You can go in and, and get some real bargains. So I've got a little strip here of Balmy Blue card. And that's just... 1.7 centimetres by 10.5 but you don't need to be precise it was literally just the scrap I had left once I'd cut this down from A4 
I cut this down from A4 and, and that was the strip I had left at the end so that's what I used so yeah we're really using all our scraps today and again granny apple green and this sentiment is from butterfly gala this is you've been on my mind before I stamp it I'm just going to cut this down to size so I'm going to cut this little piece again just a tiny little scrap that I had in my box down to 10.5 because I want it to go all the way across and then I'm going to stamp that in the middle as much in the middle as I can get so it's a perfect little card really quite quick to make you're just cutting your flower pot by hand no particular dimensions but the top piece is around eight centimeters by two and the bottom bit is about six and a half by six and a half and just wedged in there to make it look like a flower pot so that is our banner across the front here but what we need to do is stick that up on dimensionals because we need something to be able to prop this up on and at the moment that's not going to prop up on anything so we need to pop this up on dimensional so that it can act as a barrier can you see there now it, this, this won't flick up I'm going to score that better anyway but we just need to put that up on some dimensionals for now I know there's so many rainbow cards being made at the moment um, my blog hop went live this morning so if you want to have a look and um, in my blog hop no um the, the blog hop that i am part of is probably a better way to word that um i was lucky to be and proud to be invited um last november to join a blog hop that started at the beginning of the year um so we've been going for four months now there's five of us in it barry and jay sarah Gillian, and hillary um so that's gone live this morning i used the rooted in nature stamp set and I've forgotten what I was talking about. Oh yes, Sarah's done a rainbow card in there, in the blog hop. So pop on over, have a look. There's some lovely, lovely rainbow cards being made at the moment. Barry and Jay, you did one the other day, which was fab. Really enjoyed watching that. So there you can see, I've just scored that a little bit better and that now stands up. So all we need to do is add our front panel. And we're going to add that to this section here. So we need to put some glue on. But we only need to glue just this just this section if you glue all over then you won't be able to get your card to stand up okay you won't be able to bend that section anymore so we just need to pop some glue on yeah the flower pot's great isn't it Anita I was thinking this morning how can I make a flower pot shall I um oh Jill I'll send you the link to the blog hop but it's on my website, www.songbirdstamper.co.uk and if you go into today's blog post, then you'll find the hop with all the different, um, there's five of us, five of us in there. You'll find all of their links at the bottom of my blog post and then you can hop from one to the other. It's a fabulous idea, very clever. I always looked at it and thought, oh, people, people must be so really clever to do that and I, it, once you get to do something, you get to practice it, it's not as difficult as you think. So yes, Jeanette, I will go over these measurements again. Let me just go back to how I created the flower pot. Um, I was thinking, could I emboss something? And you absolutely could. You could emboss um, the, the background and then sponge it to give it some texture. But this gingham actually makes a really nice flower pot. And we've all got lots of gingham, I'm sure. So, the card base, Jeanette, I do... 28 centimeters by 10.5 and then score at 14 and score at 7 so 28 by 10.5 and that is card number one so I did a little bit of the fussy cutting earlier and the, st and the um, I didn't do any stamping for these leaves but that's only taken 25 minutes that's not bad for a card and even if you did the stamping and the punching if you had this set here and that would only take you about 45 minutes for what is actually quite a, a special card and then if you want to you can add a little panel in here to write on i haven't done that but i may well do that in a bit and just pop a little panel of whisper white in there to write on or some people put a little panel on the back here or on the bottom entirely up to you 
if you'd like to write it or you could just write a letter with your card I like sending letters I've got two people that I write to I would say fairly regularly but about a couple of times a year and it's quite nice but worryingly I haven't heard back from either of them in the last few months so I'm hoping everything's okay their end it's the problem, that, that is the problem when you write and you don't have any other communication you can't just check see if they're okay but hopefully they are right so that's that one and then I'm going to show you how to make a card which I haven't got prepared good morning Fiona how are you welcome to our easel making tutorial so while I get the other bits I'll just leave this one here for you so I had on my desk lots and lots of scraps of this birthday bonanza paper from where I was making the May class to go. I thought, oh, I really have to use these because there's, oops, oops, there's lots of little bits and I'll show you what I mean. Let's take that away. So where I cut out all the koalas and fussy cut, I'm not kidding you, close to a hundred in the end because I cut out all the wrong ones three times. So I basically cut out all of the animals from three sheets of this design series paper and maybe one more. So I was left with lots of edge bits like this because you can't use a, a koala without his feet, can you? And you can't just use, I mean, poor little thing, he's got no body. So I uh, wanted to use the other side because there's some lovely pattern papers here and I wanted to use my scraps up. So we're going to go for a different type of easel. Good morning, Fiona, other Fiona, lots of Fionas I know. That was a corner, I think they call it a corner easel, but correct me if I'm wrong. So I've started with a card base that is 15 centimetres by 30 centimetres. I've scored it in half at 15 centimetres. So it's almost six inches by six inches. Sometimes I use inches, sometimes I use centimetres. So don't yeah, I don't think I always use centimetres. And my class ladies will tell you that sometimes I use centimetres and inches in the same class. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. 15 centimetres by 30. Score at 15. Just to fold it in half. And then you're going to score it on the diagonal. On one of the sides. Just like that. And you're going to use your bone folder to crease everything really well. You have those guys popping out from pots behind presents or in trees. <laughs> Bless him. Yes, they're literally coming out from everywhere. I've got, I've got more animals now than I know what to do with. So what I'm going to do is decorate this card. And I'm using three that I didn't fussy cut, but circle punch. I saw somebody had done a really, really great game of tic-tac-toe. And they'd um, pu punched out three of two different types and it was like noughts and crosses is that tic-tac-toe it was you could use a six by six card blank absolutely clear if you've got six by six card blanks just use those that might be what this is i made i did easel cards a while ago and i had lots of these um pre-scored i don't know what i was making but i obviously didn't finish them so i've just used that so it may well have been a card blank so yeah they made and they made a fab little game of um noughts and crosses using the lions or the toucans and the koala bears so that's what we're going to do we're going to use those and then we're going to use lots of these strips and this is I would say akin to the strippy scrappy technique that I first saw Bruno do and then seen lots of other people do and that we did in our April class to go so we're going to use up all these little strips and Barry and Jay, you did something, um, if, he's probably in Tesco's now, he might have left us if he's got in. They did something with, like this with the rainbow card. So I've got a square that is 14 and a half by 14 and a half. And that's going to go on the underside of my um, easel card. Now the way I do it, if I'm doing strips, okay, I start in the middle. If you start here... There's no way by the time you get to the end that you're still going to be straight because you probably didn't start straight. So I go straight across from corner to corner. That's just how I do it. They'd look fab in that flower pot actually, Katie, wouldn't they, these little animals? I could have a little lion poking out from behind my 
flowers. And I might get a bit messy, this might get a bit gluey. So I'm just going to stick it on lightly and then turn it over and make sure I've got it lined up right. We might just need a little bit more glue. That's the hardest thing when you do this technique is to know where to glue to on the end because I don't really want to get stuck to my grid paper. And then I'm just going to go through and stick all these down. So this might be a little bit time consuming. So if anybody knows any jokes, please do feel free to tell them. Or if you want to tell me what you're doing today, what are you making, share us some pictures. And I'd love to hear from you. Because there, this might be a bit boring while I sit and wait. Parsley the lion, yeah. <laughs> Yes, exactly, Katie. I know we don't sell six by six. We don't sell any other kind of card blanks. So generally speaking, you have to make your own, which for most people isn't too much of a, a difficulty. It can be easier to just buy them, um, but I obviously try and support myself as a business. Um, so I do try and limit what I buy from elsewhere. So I've got some orange bits, but I only had short orange bits for some reason. The lions must have been closer to the edge but that will fit on there who's excited for the new catalogue then I keep giving Russ the countdown so he, he knows when it's coming out probably better than I do at the moment I think we're on five days unless I looked last night when I last looked at it was six days and three hours doing oh decoupage lovely so with one like this that's too long but i don't want to waste the whole lot just grab your scissors and cut that down there so what are you decoupage is that the old classic decoupage building images up or are you doing i think they call it deco match don't they jeanette and i've done some and jeanette i still haven't done that heart that we bought in Froome. it's it, it literally is in my to-do pile And that's where you get papers and um, yeah, you get some papers and you stick them all over the, um, uh, it's not papier-mâché, but it, it looks like papier-mâché. How long is till it released? I, literally, um, we can see it online as demos, Katie, next week. And then it will be a month until we can buy and then it will be out to everybody else in June. So how's everybody feeling with another um, three weeks of lockdown? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to hear. I know there's a few people who are really struggling with it and I'm really not surprised. Um, I'm very lucky. Oh, they look nice, Claire. Claire's just shared a picture on the Craft Along group, which if you're not a member and you'd like to join, please do feel free to, to send me a message. It's open to everybody. It's just so people have got a place to share their creations, to share their um, thoughts, feelings, ideas, anything really. But yes, I um, I know a lot of people are reeling with the news. Uh, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate. Not an awful lot has changed here. Um, apart from the fact that Ross is home every day. Um, we, I, I'm still going to work. And I didn't really used to go out that much anyway. It's a shame we can't meet together to do classes, but this has really been eye-opening for me as, as to how we can connect. You can't get, can't get me, Sandy, um, to how we can really connect still using other channels. Oh, let's go for some of this. We haven't had, we haven't had this one yet. 80 C's, nice Heidi. They're the artist trading cards for anyone who doesn't know. Oh, Anne Marie, I've just seen your card that you um, made for your mother in law. That looks fabulous. I do like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. What colour pink is that? Is that. Um, looks like a rose coloured. Looks fabulous. 
fed up walking helping we have to do this yeah we do have to do it and this is what i keep russ is struggling with it and i just keep saying to him well look just i told him to shut up yesterday <laughs> just shut up and get on with it bless him no he's um he's fine with it but yeah we he said um his problem more than anything is actually being being stuck in the same house with somebody else i said i won't take offense um, we've never been particularly uh, extroverted people. I'm just trying to get rid of some of this glue if you want to know what I'm doing. Ah, oh, Melon Mambo. Nice. Uh, lockdown. Yeah, Katie. I, I am lucky with my situation and I, I'm trying to put myself in other people's shoes. And, and for those that are isolated on their own, I literally can't imagine what it's like. Um, it must be very difficult, especially if, if they are people that you know crave human contact which which a lot of people do um and jan posted I don't, I don't know if jan's still with us she said she had to go um but jan said posted something on facebook which was like did you cry today yeah i'm not surprised you know think about what you're going through and what you're what you're struggling with and, and worrying about and the uncertainty it's not surprising we're going to have wobbles struggling now yes yeah lisa you're not alone in that you really aren't um there are a lot of people and hopefully things like this i love the fact lisa lisa's got a schedule facebook live schedule have you written it down in fact lisa and put it all in your diary and she knows who she's watching and when she's watching them i need to do something similar because i think i missed michaela titheridge's facebook live last night I actually did watch her, but it was her old one of Bertie and her husband making Mother's Day cards. So the three of them, an evening with the Tilleridges, they called it. Um, so yeah, I, I watched that last night, but I think I missed the one she actually did did, li did live. So I maybe I need to get myself a schedule. So I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm just working my way along to make a, make myself some background paper, essentially using all these different types of papers different widths yeah you hate using technology Fiona it's um, not something I relish but I'm learning so much so much um, to work some of the children you do are you so are you continuing to work with them i know some uh, counselors therapists have stopped and some have kept going virtually um mine has stopped so i'm i'm on my own with things right now which is it seems to be going okay um but yeah the little things in life that you would normally talk through with somebody else uh currently kind of trying to do that on your own which yeah might not always have the best results but <laughs> there we go thank god for me and crafting well bless you Heidi um I say I'm I am keen to stay on here and to keep keep going and say I have started uploading things to YouTube um I've figured out how to do that and how to create thumbnails when you upload something to YouTube it must pick the worst still image of you to put as the thumbnail for the start of the video and it like has you in mid mid air and, and talking with your mouth wide open and your arms flailing so I figured out how to create my own thumbnail images so again if you pop onto today's blog hop blog post you will see uh, what I mean you'll see one of my videos it's actually a Facebook live we did last week so that's all I'm doing at the moment is just uploading the Facebook live videos so nothing new, but that's not to say there won't be coming. Anita, that's a lovely hat I've just seen on the um, Facebook chat group. They're all posting pictures of their makes, which is lovely for me to be able to see them. It just pops up in the corner of my screen. Thank God for the group. Well, you've got a lovely group of people around you, so make the most of it. Um, I genuinely believe that we have connected more and I've, I've got more friendships now and than not when I did before um, I'm I find socializing 
a little tricky sometimes and so this is actually quite good for me I get to talk to myself and you're all um you're just sat there chatting to me virtually I quite like it kind of works for me you're trying to do teletherapy with them just trying to think about how you can get resources for handwriting and fine motor skills hmm if anybody knows and can help Fiona then I'm sure she'd be grateful of the help handwriting I know morning Steph I know um I don't think she's here actually but uh, Leah I think is a teacher has been a teacher I don't know but she gave some maths stuff to somebody last week I was like whoa that's way above my and I quite like maths way above my intellect level at the moment so we're nearly at the end. I've probably just got one tiny little one I can do. So how many of those strips have we used up there? Quite a lot. So a great way for using up all your little strips. Morning Steph, how are you doing? I've been loving watching your Facebook posts. So now what we need to do is trim the excess off, exactly like we did in the class last, um, last month when I sent them out. So I'm not going to use my stamping up scissors because I don't want glue all over them. <laughs> Fussy cutting keeps Heidi sane, she said. Yes. And me. And busy. Keeps you busy and out of trouble. And I'm just going to go and cut as close as you can using the Bermuda Bay as a guide. Cutting all these strips off. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Oh, lots of resources online. There we go. Hopefully you'll find something, Fiona. It's nice to keep... Um, it's nice to keep working if you can. They must rely on your... Sorry, I'm concentrating cutting. They must rely on your expertise and your um, presence. And I think I was a little surprised that counsellors stopped working because I, I truly believe they're in the medical profession um, and certainly at times like this but I do get that we are trying to limit social contact so it's difficult isn't it and I think most I, I think going online is the, is the best option if people can do it for those that would benefit from it and need it right so I've trimmed that as best I can, and that's what we're left with. Pretty, huh? I wasn't sure how this would work out, but... Fussy cutting sends you mad. Definitely a dime punch kind of girl. Yeah, some people just don't like it. I know Sandy doesn't like it. She can't make it today. I don't know. She said she was going to try and find us later. She said she couldn't find us. We've got all the parents' email addresses. Lists of fine motor activities. Oh, there you go, Steph. Maybe you could get in contact with Fiona. Give her a hand. Not trying to stitch you up with work or anything, but I hear Lily got into it is Lily, isn't it? Got into the preschool. That's good news. I know there's quite a few parents at the moment waiting to see preschool, primary, primary school. Not using phone calls. Yes, I'm surprised. I'm surprised um, they're not using phone calls too. But there we go. Right. So this is our base, and. That's going to go on there like uh, that. So I'm going to stick that down. Good morning, Melanie. Nice to have you join us. Big school. Oh, bless her. <laughs> bless her. It will, um, I would say it will give you a bit more time, but when's the... When's the baby due, Steph? Does it literally kind of get one into school and, and then have another one at home? <laughs> Bless you. I loved, loved, loved the picture of her at Easter. It, and I said to um, Stephanie, put, posted a picture of her daughter holding something and the massive grin on her face. And I said, it's just like Steph when she gets the new stamp set in her hands. Oh, that made me laugh. Oh, August. Yes, so literally one in and one out. Bless you. It's amazing, it is amazing uh, with scraps, just what you can do. 
So thank you, H. That's lovely. It's and you can make a little back. All you need. What we did um, in one of the other classes was look. You could literally just put the toucan on there, and you've got yourself a nice card. It really doesn't need an awful lot else, does it? Posting a scooter board <laughs> might be challenging. <laughs> Bless you. So what I've got are, is um, a piece of, now it was 14 by 14 and I've cut it, sorry, 14 and a half by 14 and a half and I've cut it in half. That's all I've done. No, it wasn't. It was 14 by 14 and I've cut it in half because you want it a bit smaller because if it was 14 by 14 and I cut it in half, it would come right up to this um, score line. Sorry, if it was 14 and a half by 14 and a half, it would come right up to this score line. So the card, blank, card bank front is 15 by 15. And this is about 14 by 14. But the way, the other way you can do it is to just grab a piece of paper. I think this might be how I did it. Pop it on like this. So leave the right border that you want, if you can see, if you can see that, that is. And then just mark it there and there and then line those up on your trimmer and trim it so there's two different techniques there for you okay and I'm just going to pop this on so this is a corner easel card and we've done a flat easel which I'll show you again at the end and this is I think called a corner easel and do you remember right at the beginning I said to you I had seen one that had four different easel cards in one card and what they'd done is they'd done four small corner easel cards and stuck them together so can you imagine four of these and then all the way around this square you could stand the easel cards up it looked fabulous so if anybody does decide to have a go I challenge you to make one of those take care Fiona I lo love them um, having you join us thank you so if anybody does fancy having a go, please make a, corner, a four corner easel card and show me. We'll see if anyone takes up on that challenge. <laughs> I'm not expecting you to, but if you want to, uh, if you want a challenge, there is one for you. So all I've done is layered that section on top of there. And I've gone for quite a plain card. I did think about going for a, a busier front here, but I have not. I've gone for quite a plain one because the background on here is quite busy. So I'm hoping it all comes together nicely. I haven't got one pre-prepared of this because I only had so many scraps. And I thought if I use all my scraps for making the demonstration card, then I wouldn't be able to make a card with you. And that's no fun, is it? Ah, easel cards like, oh yes, Amory, they look fabulous. It's a shame you can't post pictures to the um, ongoing chat here, isn't it? I think Facebook needs to sort that out because this is really nice. I get to see if you haven't joined the Craft Along group and you would like to, again, please do give me a shout. It's just a Facebook group um, for people who want to connect, share. I originally started it because um, we're, we're doing classes to go in the post, kits in the post. Um, I originally started it for that, but actually it's been quite a source, I think, for some of connection. So, and they, this is where they're posting the makes, and they, Amory, are beautiful, literally beautiful. They are from, are they from the um, craft fair that we went to? So, what I'm going to do, I want these popping up off the edge of my card. Can you see what I'm doing? And I'm going to stick them down so that when they stand up, they're going to pop up there. So don't forget to decorate your card still this way up. Or for you guys, this way up. Don't think you decorate it on the angle. You literally don't. You decorate it as you normally would do. Because the base is still going to be flat. So I might pop those up on... No, we won't pop them off. I was going to pop them off on dimensionals, um, but what can happen with an easel card, it can get quite thick because you need to stick something on here up on dimensionals and with another layer, it might not then be less than five millimetres for posting. So you have to be conscious if you want to post something in the UK, it has to, as a small letter, it has to be less than five 
millimetres, which is not a lot. Bibby die cut set, yes. Yes, I saw you at the um, show you'd made though. They look fab. We do like those. And so with this um, koala, we only need to glue half of it because I only want half of him on here. Okay. So I'm just going to put my finger there and that reminds me that it's this half I need to glue. And then I'm going to stick him on here. Roughly the same height as my lion. And then my toucan, toucan is going to go up here. Again, I'm going to stick my finger down and lift it up. Because I can never remember when I've lifted it up again. I can never remember which half I'm supposed to be putting glue on. And then I'm going to pop him down. And pop him on there. So I've left this space blank. And again, that's because I think that's where I would write this card if I was sending it to somebody. So they would kind of get this card looking like this. And you would write on it up here, and they go, well, okay, what am I supposed to do with this bit? And we're going to get it to stand up like this. So, I'm going to use a circle to do this. So I'm just, I'm just trying to see what this looks like. I'm not entirely sure I like that colour. So I'm just going to change that up, that orange piece, um, for the yellow piece because I think it matches better. So one's punched at two and a quarter, and this is the same for the animals as well. One's punched at two and a quarter and one's punched at two inches. So I'm just going to punch that two inches there. And pop that on there. And then from the perennial birthday stamp set, I've used this happy birthday, this long, bold, happy birthday, because I felt like it needed quite a bold sentiment to stand out on this busy background. So I've got a piece of um, cardstock here, which is just about the right width, just came from my scraps box, but it's one inch width. And I'm gonna stamp that in Bermuda Bay. So with these old stamps, um, you sometimes need to take off the uh, bit there for it to stick onto your block. The new ones are much, 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 much better. And then we're just going to line that up. Nice big bold sentiment. And I'm going to trim the ends. I might use my trimmer. I think it's quite a big piece of card. I can get away with using my trimmer. And I'm going to banner cut these ends. So I'm just leaving myself a little bit there. And a little bit on that side. And then I'm going to banner cut them. Cut in from the middle. And then cut in from either side. And again on this, cut in on the middle. And then cut in on either side. Stick that across the middle there. And so we need to put this on dimensionals, like we spoke about earlier, this card has to have something. If I just pop that there, it's not going to help it stand up, it's just going to push it away. And well, it will be glued, but we need to prop it up on dimensionals so that it acts as a support. Alright, so flip it over. Pop some dimensionals on. And 
And what I'm going to do is I want this card to... I hope you can see this when it's standing up. I want this card to stand up so that it's in line. So I'm going to hold it in place because then it means that everything will be straight, quite like straight things. That means that my sentiment will be straight as well, hopefully. In theory, they say. So tentatively put that down. Line it up until you're kind of happy with it. And then pop that down there. So there's our easel card, and then what happens, somebody gets it like this, can you see it's, it's got some dimension to it now, so that with these on dimensions it would have really lifted it up and been bigger than 5 centimetres. So there we go, so we'll pop that down on there, and we lift that up, and it just pings into place on there. There we go. So that is our easel card. So that's our corner easel card. So we've made one corner easel and we've, mon we've made one normal easel. Very, very different. Different colour palettes. This is more subtle, even though it's quite bright. It's more subtle than this one. Um, so I'd love to know which is your favourite. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, Jill. You can just see them, can't you? I wasn't sure that easel cards would be all that easy to see uh, stood upright on a flat um, with the camera overhead, but actually that's worked quite well. Thank you, guys. Lots of hearts. So that's really all for today. It's been absolutely joyous to spend an hour with you this morning. It just goes so fast, doesn't it? And I really wish I could keep going. Um, sometimes I do, and sometimes our Facebook Lives have, have been an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. Um, but I'm going to try and stick it at, at an hour at the moment. Um, I'm going to be spending the rest of my day writing the instructions for the class to go, and then packaging everything up um, and shipping it all out to you. And I will be writing a newsletter with a tutorial on uh, mirror image stamping. So that will be coming into your inboxes over this weekend as well, I hope. It was something I promised on Monday um, and it, it hasn't materialised so far. So I've got, it's still in my to-do list and I will be getting that out to you shortly. You love both of them. I know they're so different, aren't they? But yeah, I, I do like a user card, but don't forget, try and send some instructions um, if your recipient might not be sure of what to do with it because I think it was just a corner easel card that I sent a friend of mine um, and she said she didn't she just looked at it and was like um, okay it's a bit weird <laughs> and she didn't realize that if she just popped that up on there that you get a lovely card so um, I don't know how you would do that but maybe write some instructions on the back corners your favorite Claire yeah these are this is the same as the ones that Anne Marie made it's just a little bit different isn't it something we don't see all the time. I've done these ones a few times. We did these in class using the post-it notes as well. Um, but this one's a little bit different. So thank you guys for joining in. Um, I hope you stay safe and stay well. Um, it is raining today, so no going out. Stay indoors. Um, catch up on all those replay videos. Um, there's loads out there from lots of different demonstrators. If you are bored and you do fancy watching some, please do give me, and you're not sure where to look, you don't know the names of any demonstrators, please do give me a shout because as I say there are some fabulous videos out there to keep you entertained, keep you occupied and uh, keep you crafting. Thank you Kate, you take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.